Okay, let's talk about the new Mac hardware. So Apple announced three new products, a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, and a Mac Mini. All three of these devices are running their new M1 processor, Apple's custom Apple Silicon. And from what we've seen so far, the CPU performance looks really impressive. We expected it to be really good. Like we've seen what a thermally limited A14 based phone, like their iPhones can do. So this stuff, not these, these are the older Intel based units, but what they can do if they uncork it, right? They throw a fan in there or they just have better thermal properties. You can do some really powerful stuff. So the CPU performance looks awesome. The GPU performance looked pretty good as well, but keep in mind that they were comparing that stuff to Intel's older integrated graphics. So it looks competitive, but it doesn't look amazing. Now the M1 chip has eight CPU cores and eight GPU cores, and it's the same chip used across all three devices. The only difference being that the base model MacBook Air has one of those GPU cores either disabled or they're binning the chip. Whatever the reason being, the MacBook Air on the bottom end has slightly less graphical performance than the rest of the devices. The only difference between all three products is their thermal capabilities. So the base model, like the MacBook Air, has a fanless configuration. And then the MacBook Pro with its single fan can probably maintain faster clock speeds a little bit better. And then the Mac Mini, because it's the thickest of the bunch, will probably be able to maintain the fastest clock speeds for the longest period of time. That's how they've differentiated the kind of performance between them. And that's why they don't have, you know, people are asking, why are there no clock frequencies mentioned in the material? It's because it doesn't matter. All three of them have the exact same clock frequency at the top end. It's just how long can they maintain that clock frequency is the difference between them based on the thermal capabilities of the cooling solution. If we look at the graphics capabilities of the M1 chip, this comes in around 2.6 teraflops. That's with all eight GPU cores active. This is very competitive. It's a lot better than what Intel was offering before. And it's even better than what Ryzen, like AMD's Ryzen chips offer right now with their integrated solutions. So it's capable hardware and Apple's usually really good at leveraging their hardware to do some impressive stuff. But the GPU capabilities of M1 are somewhat limited, right? If you compare this to what the 16 inch MacBook Pro has with their current AMD offering, that is just so much better than M1. But I think we'll get there. In time, when the 16 inch MacBook Pros come out with Apple Silicon, the GPUs will be really powerful. Like maybe it'll be a M2 chip or like an M1X chip, whatever it is. I'm looking forward to that because I, I like my graphics. Okay, let's move on to the topic of power efficiency. And I think this is the thing that's gonna affect the vast majority of people out there, right? Not everyone needs super powerful processors and stuff like that, but when it comes to power efficiency, everybody can appreciate it. It's the thing, the main feature that makes M1 worth considering right now because you cannot get this type of power efficiency on any other laptop right now. Not, like it's just not possible. I've seen a few of them on this channel. Here's the thing, I've seen so many laptop companies claim X number of battery life hours, right? It's just, you've never seen 20. It's never been done before on a 13 inch device. 20 hours of video playback is bonkers. Like that's a solid 50% more for the same battery size as the previous generation. It's as if it's new battery tech. Right, and imagine there's some new carbon-based battery that, that, you know, imagine that came out. Hey, here's some new batteries that are 50% better than what you had before. That's what it feels like. This is how significant it is. And when I look into the comments and people are complaining about, oh, the bezels are the same. They didn't change the heart. Like, who cares? 50% better battery life. Do you, do you get that on a, on a laptop? Like, this is why we buy laptops, right? So we can use them portably away from our office, away from our home. To get 50% more fuel is insane. And people are complaining about bezels on the screen. Okay, the third thing I wanna talk about is pricing. So originally when they first came up with this stuff, I was hopeful that they would reduce the price on it, right? Because when you have control and you're making your own chips, you can theoretically reduce the price of your products. The two laptops remain the same. The Mac mini has reduced by a hundred bucks. Now, my take on it is this, you do get way more hardware, way more performance with this new stuff than you did before for your dollar. Um, I really would have liked to see a price drop, but 
it's Apple, it's kind of expected. One thing I don't like is that the pricing of their storage upgrades is still quite expensive. It's $200 to go from 256 to 512 gigs of storage, which is nasty in 2020. And they still only have 720p webcams. They've improved the signal processing on it. So it's just gonna be cleaner images, but it's still 720p resolution. They do have Wi-Fi 6 and USB-C 4, but you can't connect external GPUs to these devices. At least I don't think you can. And yeah, there's no way you can. And they also have an instant on feature, which may seem insignificant, but I've seen it implemented in some Windows laptops. It's actually really nice. You, you flip open it, you're working right away. It seems insignificant, I know. You watch the demo, you're like, who cares? But when you've used it and you get used to it, you'll probably appreciate it. So that is my early impressions of M1 and the hardware. I will be doing full reviews on all of them. Uh, I feel like I wanna test not just like the Apple apps, but because I'm, a Adobe user and a lot of their stuff isn't native to, to the new M1 hardware yet. I wanna see, you'll see my review. They'll be good, I hope. Um, okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.